नमस्कार मैं हूं सौरभ कुमार और ये है रेडमाइक दुनिया आज हम बैठे हैं डॉक्टर मोहम्मद मरांडी के साथ आप सब जानते हैं डॉक्टर मोहम्मद मरांडी को मिडिल ईस्ट के बहुत बड़े एक्सपर्ट हैं और एंटलिज्म के बहुत बड़े एक्सपर्ट हैं और यहाँ ईरान में प्रोफेसर भी हैं लेकिन आप इनको सी एन पे बीबीसी पे तमाम दुनिया के चैनल्स पे आप इनको देखते होंगे मिडिल ईस्ट में जो क्राइसिस है या ईरान के इंटरनल जो इशूज हैं उसके बारे में इनको बात करते हुए आपने सुना होगा तो हम इनका इस्तेबाल करते हैं और हम चंद सवाल इनसे करते हैं मिडिल ईस्ट के बारे में वेलकम मिस्टर मैम थैंक यू वेरी मच लेट्स स्टार्ट विद लेबनन हाउ डू यू सी द वॉर गोइंग ऑन देयर आई मीन डू यू थिंक इज़राइल इज गोइंग टू अटैक लेबनन इन नियर फ्यूचर और डू यू थिंक देर इज अ स्टिल मेट एंड द होल वॉर इज टाइटली मैनेज्ड एज इट इन दे हैव कंट्रोल द एक्सकेलेशन there is deep division in israel and the regime uh is uh, in a lot of trouble and netanyahu is in personal trouble as we all know so it's difficult to assess what will happen in the coming weeks but i think it's very clear that if the israeli regime does carry out an attack on the resistance in lebanon a major attack on the country that it will be defeated It, there will be major devastation many people will die but the israeli regime is very vulnerable the resistance has its capabilities underground they're well developed they have uh the most of cap- they have the, the great intelligence they have high tech weapons and uh, all of the key infrastructure of the israeli regime are vulnerable the israeli regime has much more key infrastructure than this lebanon so if hezbollah starts striking the key assets of the regime the economy will collapse immediately it's already in great trouble the regime the americans don't want an escalation europe doesn't want an escalation so it would seem that based upon this reality the regime would not pursue an expansion of the war however it's a very irrational regime it's a genocidal regime and since it is unreasonable anything is possible uh, we have heard a lot of um, things about the internal division among the israelis i mean uh, sometimes it appears that the idf has something else to say the political establishment has something else to say and now they are forcibly uh, pushing the orthodox jews to also enlist in the army which is a, it is a big issue how do you see the internal conflict in israel uh, you know erupting because of this uh, event from 7th october yes israelis are deeply divided most israelis whether secular or religious are zionists but there is a segment that is not zionists in addition to that there are divisions among the zionists the secular and the religious zionists but also you have the collapse of the israeli economy and the longer the war lasts the worse it's going to get so many people many educated people who especially those who are in high tech industries they will have to leave the country there is no future for many of these businesses in israel israel is no longer a safe place for investment it will never be a place for investment again in future many of those who have invested have left and those who want to in, invest will no longer invest so i think many elites in israel will leave a lot of money will leave a lot of the highly educated people will leave if for no other reason than to find jobs elsewhere so i think that the damage that's being created both because of those ideological divisions inside the country and the economic damage but also the the damage that has been created with regards to the image of israel across the world all of that will make the lives of israelis much more difficult in future and therefore i think that we are moving in a direction where ultimately the zionist project will fail you know we have heard a lot about uh, Hezbollah doing his doing the things in the uh, northern occupied Palestine uh, but there are some sections especially coming from the Persian Gulf countries some of the media houses uh, they have been trying to create um, a perception that as if 
Hezbollah has done nothing, it is hitting the empty uh, towers or buildings. Uh, can you explain for our audience what exactly is Hezbollah achieving in the north? Hezbollah has destroyed all of the Israeli regime's capabilities to gather information. It has diminished its air defense capabilities. If you recall just a few days ago, uh, the, Hez the resistance Hezbollah published a, a long clip List, of yeah, its uh, drone. drone, the Hod Hod drone that flew all over Israel and gathered information about all of its key infrastructure. So the Israeli regime is completely vulnerable to Hezbollah's capabilities. Those countries in the Persian Gulf region that say otherwise, they are supporters of the Israeli regime and they don't reflect the views of their own people. These are family dictatorships that are allied with the Israeli regime, that are allied with the United States, and they've always been hostile towards the resistance, uh, but uh, the resistance is doing very well. Hezbollah will continue to fight as long as the Israeli regime does not meet the demands of Hamas and the resistance in Gaza. Last question, it's about Ansarullah. Uh, you have talked in the past about Ansarullah's achievements vis-a-vis -vis, uh, uh, NATO's naval presence in the region. Uh, how do you think uh, this is going to shape uh, the entire war? Uh, Ansarullah's presence has, of course, it has given a lot of faith and a lot of courage to other parties also. But how do you think it's shaping the larger war in the region? Ansarullah has shown that Yemen controls the Red Sea and that despite the U.S. efforts and the efforts of its allies, both in the region but in the West, that they cannot do anything about this. Ansarullah is in control. Therefore, they can shape the way in which global trade takes place. If Ansarullah wants, they can stop European and American companies from using the Red Sea. Whereas, if they have good ties with India or China or Russia or whoever else, they can allow them to use the Red Sea. So Ansarullah um, has become a key power in West Asia. In some ways, perhaps one of the two main powers in West Asia alongside Iran. They have shown to the world that their technology and their techn technological capabilities, despite years of genocidal war against them by the Saudis and the Emiratis and the Western countries alongside them, despite years of genocidal war, they've been able to outmaneuver and defeat the biggest navy in the world. And I think that is more important, the very concept that the United States has been beaten by Ansarullah is more important than the number of ships that they've struck or the number of ships that have been blocked from going to Israel. It sends an even bigger message. It shows that the United States is not nearly as powerful as it claims to be and people across the world will notice that. Thank you, Dr. Maranding. It has been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.